In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create unique shapes just by subtracting one shape that's in the front from its shape in the back in Illustrator just by using the minus front option in the Pathfinder panel. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? Okay. I thought so. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Just click the link below. Hello Creative! It's your Graphics Girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. So to begin with, you're going to need your basic shape. In the example to the right up here of the crescent moon, we needed two circles. So consider this, whether you're making an emblem, an archway, crescent moon, waves of the ocean, or a decorative border, think about what is the shape that you want to wind up with. Then think about the shapes that you could subtract from another to create that basic shape. So when you're using the minus front option from the Pathfinder panel, consider what do I need to subtract from what to get the shape that I need. So in each of these shapes, we had other shapes that first were laid on top of in order to be left with the shape that we were. So in this shape, I had a circle and I had a burst. Both of these shapes can be made with the shape tool. So if you click and hold down, you can create a star burst with the star tool. When you select that and you click down one time, you can give yourself some parameters such as 2.5 and the second point is two, so that there's not that much of a difference between these two. And this refers to the outer point and the inside point. Next, I chose something like 17. If you like, you can use a round number such as 20. So when you click OK, I'm left with this starburst. So when you're creating one shape from another, and here the circle was created by just holding down the ellipse tool and utilizing the shift key to make a perfect circle. So it's helpful to do two things when creating a shape that subtracts the front shape from the shape behind it. One they're not both the same color. So first step, make sure that your two colors are different. Another tip that I like to do is to make that top color, let's say in this case white, or otherwise match your artboard color. So with that shape being white, you can get a sense of the preview of the shape that you'll be left with. So here I could select both of these shapes and come to my align panel and ensure that these are vertically aligned. In this case, I'll go ahead and make sure they're also horizontally aligned. And now with this shape being colored white, I can get a sense of the shape that I'd be left with. So I'll go ahead and make this yellow, selecting both again. Now when I minus front, you can see that I'm left just with this shape. Once again, you can go into outline mode with Command or Control Y to see that there is in fact only one shape. Another way you can ensure that this is only one shape is to go ahead and change the color. By changing the color, you can see it's applied just to that one shape. Okay, so next, an archway. In this case, I started with a rectangle and I gave myself this perfect oval you could create for yourself a rounded rectangle if you like and just increase that radius something like 0.5 and then I subtracted that from the rectangle below it. I happen to have made a line with a very thick line and then I used my capped or rounded the edge rotating it vertically. I put it in top of my rectangle and then subtracted both. To see how I create a cap line, be sure to watch my video up here on how to create all kinds of lines, capped, dashed, and otherwise in Illustrator. This one, once again, were two perfect circles. And if you want to use my trick of making it white, you can get the placement of exactly where you wanted that first top circle to be 
in order to see what you would be left with, how much of a crescent moon you wanted to make. Then you select both, and once again from your Pathfinder panel, choosing minus front. Now these down here, I'll back out just a little bit with Commander Control Minus, were a little bit more complicated. In this case, I created a blend by first creating one circle and then its second circle, aligning it to the edges and then utilizing the blend tool to go all the way across. Here's how I did it. I'll start with my rectangle tool and then I'll go ahead, changing my fill color to red here and make a perfect circle just by holding down the shift key. Next, I'm gonna to wanna to ensure with Command and Control Y that I'm in the dead center of that circle's object, meaning the little center point of that object. I would wanna make that be on the line, like so. And if I wasn't sure that I was all the way at the edge, I could select both the circle and the rectangle and use my line panel horizontal align left tool. Go ahead and back in out again. Pan on over here, bringing it back to preview mode so you can see the color. And I would select that circle holding my option key to make a copy and adding in my shift key to make a copy of it on the same horizontal edge. So once again, Command or Control Y, I can see that it's already lined up to its center point because the other one was already, and I can select both these shapes and align now. Command Y to bring it back to preview, H on your keyboard to pan over with your hand, and now V to select this, and now Shift to select my other shape. With both top circles here selected, I could come to Object, Blend. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose Make. And it filled it in. You could play around with your settings of your blend if this is not the look that you wanted. But here, once again, since it's a blend, I can select one part of it and it will still select all. Once again, now using my Pathfinder panel's minus front feature, this actually won't work if I have just a blend and then the shape behind it. Because as you can see in outline mode, I really only have these two circles. If I were to subtract the front, why it just doesn't work. I have to do one more step before I can use that. And that is to come to blend, expand, to break apart my blend into individual shapes. You see, now I have all of these circles. So with the circles and then shift click my rectangle to select everything, when I subtract the front, I'm left with these waves. So always think about it like this. If you were to have taken the pen tool here, right, and created a point and come down here and hold in my shift key to make it a 45 degree angle and probably need my ruler here, this would be a harder trick. Now I'll put a stroke on. You can see that this would be more difficult to do with the pen tool than subtracting a circle from a rectangle, right? So it's not impossible to create these waves. In fact, I'll do another video in the future going over in greater detail the tricks that I use when I teach how to use the pen tool effectively. But always think, would it be easier for me to subtract one shape from another versus having to create individual points with the pen tool? Last example right here. So go ahead and I'll do this one here. Rectangle tool. I'm gonna go ahead and make a perfect rectangle. I can use my rotate tool with R on the keyboard if you like it. And now when you rotate it, holding down the shift key will keep it constrained to 45 degree increments. And I can now select both my diamond shape and the rectangle using my align panel to top align that shape. So zooming in with my zoom tool here, 
let me be a little bit more precise because your alignment of your shapes is everything. It did make it top aligned, zooming in even more. But I want the point of this shape to be right at the edge. When I back out with Command and Control minus and pan down, I'm just gonna make sure that my center point is right on the line. All right, double clicking the hand to bring it on back. Command Y to see my preview, there I am. Now I have this diamond that I'm gonna hit Option to drag and now my Shift key to make a copy on the same vertical plane, selecting now both the rectangle and this diamond. I'll bottom align it, by the way, making sure all this time that you are aligning to selection. Now I can select both the top and the bottom diamond. And now with them both selected, when you choose Object Blend, Blend Options, you could say specified steps four. So you can see there that it put, put one, two, three, four shapes in between the top and bottom shape. So with this now, I could select my blend that I've created. And when you go into outline mode, you can see it's still a blend because you only see the top and bottom shape. And the last step is object blend expand. So when you expand that shape now, you can see it's made up of all of these individual diamonds and their overlap. And now when you select that back rectangle and come to the Pathfinder tool, it will subtract or minus the front from the back. And so this is still one big shape that with my direct select arrow, I could choose to modify it however I wanted. Right, I could go ahead and if I didn't want this point, I could use my pen tool and delete an anchor point here and just subtract out that point completely. So this is absolutely modifiable, right? I'll command or control Z to bring that back. But if I decided, you know what? This would be easier for me to sit there and do zigzag with the pen tool and you know do my best all the way down. And then I'll go like here, there, and everywhere. If I came back and I decided I wanted to make this uniform, obviously I can use my ruler with a guide there. You know, when I place those points, or in, a, in other words, you know, and I can modify these points individually to make them hit that guide, I still think, I'll go ahead and hide these guides, I still think that you're gonna have a greater likelihood of uniformity and consistency if you subtract one shape from another versus creating a shape manually with the pen tool. So if you're going for symmetry, you're going for consistency, and you're going for convenience. You really can't beat the minus front option of the Pathfinder tool to create the shapes that you want by subtracting them from other shapes. Go ahead and leave a comment below if you have any questions on any of the tools that I showed in this tutorial, even beyond the minus front option of the Pathfinder panel in Illustrator. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, hey! share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.